So welcome back to coffee time. So on my trip to Columbia, I got the flu and uh, I'm recovered from the flu. It was just a few days, but it leaves a congestion in my lungs. And what I've learned here is that at a low altitude, that congestion goes away in a couple days for me. But when I'm at altitude, like in Cuenca, that congestion remains for a very long time. Uh, the last time it turned into pneumonia. So I'm being more careful about it this time, but it is a concern. I also had the flu one time, got congestion, and the doctor told me to get to a lower altitude. I did, and it was in a matter of a few days later it cleared up. So it's definitely an issue for someone like me. I had pneumonia really, really bad one time. And they said it scarred my lungs. And that causes a problem getting rid of that congestion. But here I am. I feel pretty good. I just have this cough that drives me crazy. Um, but we got a few things to talk about. So while I was in the Columbia in Armenia, I ran into a viewer, someone who watches these videos on a regular basis, and was actually in Armenia to explore based on things that I had said about Armenia. I will say that I think she got a bit of culture shock uh, in South America, and it would be interesting to converse with her after she had been for quite a period of time. She was spending a lot of her time working in her hotel room and just venturing out here and there. And the impression she had that she expressed to me, I understood, but they're really not very fleshed out impressions. They, in reality, they weren't really that accurate, but I get where she was coming from. It was interesting, it was nice to meet her. She bought me a lunch, so I had beef tongue, which was delicious, I loved it. So if you're watching, thank you for that, and I hope you're having a good trip. I made a 10 second mention in a video that I'm going to stop being a monk and maybe even look for a girlfriend. Well, it's not like I have some concerted effort or advertisement in the local newspaper wanted girlfriend, um, but I just thought I would mention that because um, I get asked that a lot about people wanting to come here. What happens if I'm going to look for a girlfriend? And will I ever find one? And I don't know. I mean, I was never looking for a girlfriend. All I'm doing is keeping that idea open. I've actually had a couple dates with people that I've met over time. I don't know that there's anything, I don't know. Um, if anything happens, I'll let you know. Quick update on the foundation, the San Martin Foundation. There will be the first interviews this coming week of parents with some street kids. There's two that are set up uh, last I knew. Adriana asked me to accompany her on those interviews. Uh, the last thing she had to do was meet with a psychiatrist and go over the screening process, her application form that she gives to parents. And so that's all done. She's prepared. She's ready to go and to get them started. I was a bit shocked when I saw the amount of money it's going to take to get these kids set up. Uh, but it's all been done through the government and confirmed. The information's real, it just it was shocking to me. Okay, for a budget, in a school where there are available slots for more students, it's going to run about $350 a month to get one kid back into school. Now, what that amounts to is the cost of the school itself, no, they're not all free. Lunches, the bus, no, that's not free. 
So the school bus has a cost. Uh, school supplies, including a backpack and the pencils and all the things that they need for the school. And the last one is a homework tutor. Now these are kids with parents that are struggling to keep the family alive. And they don't have a lot of free time or maybe they don't have enough education. They're not able to help them a lot with homework. So there's a, there's a cost for a homework tutor to make sure they're successful in school when they get back. There's a lot of catching up time depending on how long they've been out of school. Now, I mentioned the cost if there was an open spot in the school. If there's not, they actually have to buy a new slot and that takes that budget from $350 a month to $500 a month. Like I said, I was in shock. I had no idea. I knew it was expensive but I didn't realize it was going to be that expensive. So that's what's going on. And she's gonna need some help with the fundraising uh, now that I see the scope of this uh, because her first group, she wants to have about 30 kids. So I've made contact with the Hearts of Gold Foundation. That's a foundation here in Cuenca that's purpose is to help raise money for other foundations. And so I think this would be a good fit. They do a lot of things with kids in schooling, and they might even be able to have ways to defray some of these costs. So that meeting is coming up. Uh, hopefully we put that together this coming week. That's what's going on at the foundation. It takes forever to get this stuff rolling, but after about uh, nine months of legalities and preparation, it's finally there. Uh, of course, without a budget, it won't do much good. And yeah, I still haven't replaced those broken glasses. And they are broken. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll get new frames. So I'm back, feeling good. Videos are gonna start rolling again. Um, I could not find any kind of decent internet that was reliable uh, just because of the places I stay. It's, the internet is very reliable there, it's very reliable here in Cuenca, but it depends on where you are. So we're good to go. I've got a lot to cover. I've got a lot of uh, clips from the trip and things to tell you about the trip. Uh, the two companions that uh, I met up with in Cali and rode with me to Armenia, Manizales, and back to Armenia. It turned out these two girls happened to know my friends in Armenia. That's why we ended up doing the road trip together for a few days. And that's how I got this flu. They were sick and I didn't know it. But that's it for coffee time for today. I'll see you in a day or two.